Hey everyone, it's Stella. We're doing a work happier live. I'm just gonna share this very quickly because Sean couldn't make it tonight, so I have to share it. Oh goodness, how do I even share this? Hey Sally. Awesome, I'm really excited you guys are here. Oh, Sean is here. Yay, Sean, you can share it because I can't figure out how to do it. Thanks for joining. All right, so tonight, um, it's really embarrassing that from like, I don't know how many Facebook Lives ago, this chart about how to prioritize your goals is still on here and I haven't erased it. So we'll just move that out of the way. Okay, so last week in our Work Happier Weekly, which is every week where I talk to you guys for about 10 to 15 minutes-ish about how to work happier and live better. And in case I didn't already say, my name is Stella Grisant, in case we don't know each other. And I'm a, a positive psychology expert, executive coach, and just here to hopefully help you make every day matter more. So last week we talked about how to get the appreciation and respect you deserve because nothing's more devastating than not feeling seen, than not feeling like you matter. And another part of that uh, is around the other side of that, I guess you could say. I want to say the other side of the coin, but it's not necessarily, is around feedback. If you're the one giving the feedback, um, whether it's positive or negative, I want you to know these two really critical points because I see it go wrong all the time. So the number one thing when it comes to your giving feedback either positive or negative, and I say this around all important conversations or any conversation in general, is the energy that you're bringing to it. So if you're about to go into a conversation with someone, with an employee who's messed up and did something wrong, or let's say is continuously coming in late and it's really upsetting you, if you go into that conversation and have a perfectly rehearsed script of what they did wrong, why it's wrong, how you've already discussed it, and what they need to do differently, that's legit. But if you're going in there with the sensation of anger, with uh, the thoughts, with the judgmental thoughts that this person is incompetent, that this person is a disappointment, that you that if you're feeling that frustration when you're delivering this feedback, then that feedback and all the requests that you have or the legitimate points that you want to make are gonna go out the window because they're going to be in fight or flight mode because they're gonna be feeling the attack of your thoughts and not really hearing the rationale behind your words. Does that make sense? So, if, if you are in a place where you're really disappointed with someone or someone did something wrong and you're finding yourself feeling really frazzled or some strong negative emotion, I would give yourself some time until you can process and neutralize, maybe even get some more information and data before you go into this conversation, okay? So that's point number one. And that same thing works when you're giving positive feedback. Hey, Amy. So that same thing works when you're giving positive feedback. So if I, if you just did an amazing presentation and I'm telling you did a good job, but you can tell my heart's not in it, then that also really doesn't land with the person. Because as human beings, our emotions are contagious. And whether or not I am conscious of your emotions, I am able to receive them and you're transmitting them on an unconscious level. And so there is some kind of information trickling into my head if you don't really mean what you're saying. So the first thing you wanna do is, if it's negative, create some space until you can neutralize or come to this person from a compassionate place. Um, when you're giving negative feedback, you want to give it from a place of service. So that's really the energy that you want to bring. You want to help this person grow. You want them to know their impact 
so that they can show up better because you know they want to show up better. We all want to show up better. We all want to be of service. So your giving this feedback is helpful for the growth of that uh, individual. And on the positive note, it's so important to feel the authenticity because if not, then that actually makes me question my performance even though you're actually trying to tell me I did a good job, okay? So the second most important thing when it comes to giving feedback is specificity. So what if let's say Bob was late three times last week and I start a conversation saying, hey Bob, I noticed you've been late a lot lately. Well, Bob might go immediately into the defensive because you're saying he was late a lot. But meanwhile, Bob may have a completely clean record of showing up on time. It just happened to be a really bad week because he has a newborn and he hasn't been sleeping. So specificity is really important when you start a conversation, whether it's negative or positive, to really stick to the very specific facts and open up on observations that you've made about someone's performance. So on the negative note, you would wanna say, hey Bob, I noticed you were late three times last week. Uh, on the positive note, you might wanna say something like, hey Amy, you, the way you explained your insights and strategy for our upcoming launch really changed the way I thought about our, our whole year. And I really appreciate uh, how you broke down um, the market analysis. I'm totally making this up. But you get what I'm saying? When you're giving someone positive feedback beyond just saying good job, it's important to call out what actually did they do and what was the impact of what they did on you. How did it make you feel? How did it make you think differently? How did it make you act differently? Okay, and the same thing with the negative in, in terms of what actually happened, what did they do, and then how did it make you feel? And what was its impact on you? So when you do that, you're really helping a person understand and you're creating hopefully an opening for dialogue and an opportunity for you to increase mutual understanding of where one another is coming from, whether it's a positive instance or a negative instance. So with that, do you guys have any questions? Hey, Jenna. Any like situations, any tough situations you're in? If you have a particular question or a challenge that you're having at work that you want me to address in a Work Happier Weekly, Hey, I would love to. So you can just message me on Facebook. You can write me Stella at Wupa.com and suggest a Facebook Live topic. We can make it totally anonymous. And that would be super fun. I would love that because I want to know what's on your mind and how can I help you with this stuff, okay? So with that, I hope you guys have a wonderful night and that you enjoyed this Work Happier Weekly. And if you want to receive my newsletters, updates, upcoming workshops, speaking stuff, you can, I'm just looking on my calendar to see if I have any new announcements for you. You can um, go to whoopa.com, sign up for my newsletter. It's at the very bottom there. And, um, and if, you, if, you're, if you're struggling with a dynamic that you're having with someone at work, then, uh, then ping me because we could totally explore that. Um, and if you need support working together, I am here. All right. With that, have a wonderful night and talk to you guys later. Bye.